Hi guys. It is a gray, gloomy day. Hopefully I can uh, make it through uh, a rant without having to dive back into the tiny house. But it is a gloomy Sunday afternoon in the collapse of global industrial civilization. That would be Sunday, September 25th. 2022 so uh, I'm just gonna sit here and talk to myself for a while with my broken record rant I don't know why I keep doing this I, I just can't help myself just can't help myself so uh, we're going to look at two stories today about from the mainstream media um, about the global food crisis, the famine, the growing famine, and uh, I'm going to start with this main article from good old Associated Press, and then we're going to jump over and read an opinion piece from one of these global food experts uh, afterwards, but Again, I will try to put the link to both of these stories, so we're just going to hit some of the high points or low points, as it were, starting with the AP story headlined, Knocking on Famine's Door, UN Food Chief Wants Action Now. Yes. <clears throat> the UN Food Chief, UN Food Chief, warned Thursday that the world is facing, quote, a perfect storm on top of a perfect storm, hmm. and urged donors, particularly Gulf nations and billionaires, to give a few days of their profits to tackle a crisis with the fertilizer supply right now and prevent widespread food shortages next year. This is uh, World Food Program Executive Director David Beasley, quote, Otherwise, there is going to be chaos all over the world, close quote. Beasley said that when he took the helm of the World Food Program five and a half years ago, only 80 million, only 80 million people around the world were headed towards starvation. Quote, and I'm thinking, well, I can put the World Food Program out of business, he said. So that was five and a half years ago. So what do you think has happened since he took the reins? Instead of 80 million, we now have 345 million people headed towards starvation, according to Beasley since. Uh, so, I just decided, you know, just to spend about 30 seconds uh, looking at the global population six years ago compared to today, and notice, if you believe the numbers, that there are 534 million more people on this planet than there were when he uh, took over. 534 million. So he says 345 million, whatever, minus the 80 that were already there. 200, where is that? Somewhere like 265 million people. Uh, so five and, okay. So I, I just wonder how many of those 265 million people now facing starvation that were not facing starvation six years ago are children who should never have been born. Just a wondering, and, and I'm just going to take a wild hunch that the vast majority of the 265 million or whatever you want to call it, let's call it a quarter billion hungry mouths, uh, were not, you know, were not born yet. Anyway, uh, 
quoting Beasley, quote, within that, within that 345 million are 50 million people in 45 countries knocking on famine's door. If we don't reach these people, you will have famine, starvation, destabilization of nations unlike anything we saw in 2007, 2008, and 2011, and you will have mass migration. We have got to respond now. Yes, so uh, UN General Assembly President, this is not the same as the Secretary General. The General Assembly President Saba Karosli noted in his opening address that, quote, we live, it seems, in a permanent state of humanitarian emergency, close quote. Uh, so now the UN uh, funding gap for humanitarian appeals stands at $32 billion, the widest gap ever, meaning, you know, this is the widest gap, the United Nations always holding out their hand, you know, for more and more and more money from, you know, the rich honkies is who they're talking about, to send you know where you know exactly where we're talking about sending the money. I don't even need to say it. So, and this is the biggest gap for what they're asking for than what they're getting in history. And this brings up the subject of donor fatigue. Donor fatigue. Beasley said donor fa fatigue often undermines aid, particularly in countries in ongoing crisis like Haiti. Yep, yep, yep. And then, uh, so we've got donor fatigue. You know, it's people that, uh, you know, all of these rich people uh, have been handing out all of this money, all of this food aid, sending over, you know, whether it's Haiti, Africa, Bangladesh, whatever, uh, you, you know where this is going, uh, where, where, where all of this money is going, and all they see is, uh, is these people receiving this aid having more and more and more kids to starve. And they just say, to hell with it. Uh, I'm getting fatigued about this. This is, uh, I think, what... Carlos Castaneda and, and Don Juan Matus were talking about when they're saying getting beyond the point of no pity. Uh, that, that, that you, you know, these emotional appeals to, uh, to you know, to, to folks uh, with, with the goods uh, to keep bankrolling uh, these people in, in these in these countries that have overshot their carrying capacity you know you keep you we keep feeding them and they keep breeding this is what's called donor fatigue they, they act like this this is where you, you, you know the mainstream media or whatever you want to call them, will not touch this third rail about why there's donor fatigue. You, you know, people are getting sick and tired of it. Uh, all we're doing is, is sending them money to allow them to continue the cycle. It is called overshoot. Uh... And then, of course, he talks about the corona, how the corona panic, not the virus, the economic over response uh, to the corona panic. Uh, you know, you add that uh, 
economically devastated them, uh, which is exactly what it did. So I love this one. So mothers, so mothers, Beasley said, are forced to decide, are forced to decide, do I have more children or do I stop having any more children to starve to death? Obviously, guys, I am joking. I am joking. You will not see the O word anywhere in a story about famine. Nowhere mentioned. The two O words, overpopulation, overshoot. Neither one of them mentioned. So mothers, Beasley said, are forced to decide, do they buy cooking oil and feed their children, or I guess cook their children, or do they buy heating oil so they don't freeze because there's not enough money to buy both? Yes, it's a perfect storm on top of a perfect storm. And with the fertilizer crisis we're facing right now with droughts, we're facing a food pricing problem in 2022. This created havoc around the world. If we don't get on top of this quickly, and I don't mean next year, I mean this year, you will have a food availability problem in 2023, and that is going to be hell. Yes. And then they go and explain uh, how 50% of the world's food, according to Beasley, is 100% dependent on fertilizer if you stopped using uh, chemical fertilizers, you know, fossil fuel-based fertilizers, and, and tried to do this organically, that 50% of the food on this planet would, would not come in. This is a, an inconvenient truth for all these organic farmers. I am an organic gardener. It's a joke, ain't gonna happen. Organic gardening and farming isn't gonna work. So do your own math. Um, talk a lot. Uh, okay. Then he, you know, he's handing out uh, he's holding out his hand for money from all these billionaires, talking to the billionaires, claiming that they, the billionaires, have a moral obligation and need to care, you know, about all the starving people. Even if you don't give it to me, even if you don't give it to the World Food Program, get in the game, get in the game of loving your neighbor and helping your neighbor people are suffering and dying around the world when a child dies every five seconds from hunger. Shame on us. Shame on us. Uh, shame on us. Okay. When a child in Somalia dies of hunger, shame on Elon Musk. And of course, shame on Vladimir Putin. Uh, you know, Vladimir Putin is probably, you know, he's starving. How many, he's, he, you know, anyway, sh shame on the billionaires. It is the billionaires' fault that a child in Somalia dying every five seconds. So I see we have six comments on here. We're going to check in with a comment from Humpty Dumpty. <clears throat> Humpty Dumpty says, writing, editing, and publishing an article on global food insecurity without ever once mentioning the word Overpopulation is like writing an article about McDonald's without ever once mentioning the word hamburger. 
There you go. And the next to that article uh, was an opinion piece out of the Des Moines Register from Des Moines, Iowa, which is actually a pretty decent newspaper. This is from a guy named Kerry Fowler. Let's see if we can get some bio. This is uh, Kerry Fowler's uh, sermon on, you know, on guilting honky. Kerry uh, Fowler is the U.S. Special Envoy for Global Food Security. I'm not quite sure what that means. So this is the U.S. Special Envoy for global food security. Uh, what does he have to, what is his opinion? Kerry <laughs> Fowler's opinion is the world cannot ignore the global food crisis and its consequences. <clears throat> August, meaning the one just ending, August was the 452nd consecutive month that the global average temperature exceeded the 20th, 20th century average for the same month. To climatologists, 452 adds up to climate change. To farmers around the world, that translates to a lot of really bad weather. To those in Somalia, that very well can mean a famine this year. In any case, it, talking about climate change in this article, contributes to a global food crisis and one which all the world's countries must address. Yes. Uh, on behalf of President Biden, this is how concerned Joe Biden is about the problem, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken did just that when he joined world leaders at the Global Food Security Summit in New York on September 20, 20th at the UN General Assembly at the gathering, he challenged global partners to take the needed actions to combat the negative impacts of conflict and climate change on food security. Yes, climate change has arrived. During the 1980s, there were fewer than three natural disasters per year in the U.S. that cost roughly $1 billion each in damage, inflation adjusted. In contrast, there were 20 such natural disasters in the last year. Credible projections indicate that by mid-century in many countries, the best growing season's temperature rise will closely resemble the worst of the past. So according to him, right now, globally 193 million people face acute food insecurity. Okay, so we have this other guy, David Beasley, saying 345 million are currently facing food insecurity, while this dude is saying 193 million people are facing acute food insecurity. And then they talk about uh, what Beasley mentioned. This year's projected budget for shortfall for the World Food Program exceeds last year's entire budget. Yes. Uh, and then he kind of, you know, talks about the dude I did, you know, he sends you over to David Beasley getting back to Kerry, and we're only beginning to feel the full effects of climate change. Okay. So the U.S. is providing an unprecedented amount of food and humanitarian assistance and is the World Food Program's largest donor, which means when they say, of course, the U.S., they mean U.S. taxpayers. U.S. taxpayers, we are the, well, I don't know if I'm still considered a taxpayer or not, but anyway, 
for the little people who pay taxes, uh, we are the World Food Program's long, largest donor. But make no mistake, these efforts, meaning the U.S. taxpayers sending all of that food aid over to Somalia, uh, are neither enough to resolve the current crisis nor prevent another food aid regardless of the amount, regardless of how much uh, money, money we pony up, is not and cannot be the only means to address food insecurity. And crazy me actually believed for one second, actually believed for one second that this dude was going to mention overpopulation. And I, I know he wasn't going to be as absurd as to suggest that food aid be tied to sterilization. You know, you, 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 draw, you, you go to the vasectomy clinic or the tubal ligation clinic, get your little green card and hand it to him and get your bag of rice for your seven kids. Anyway, nope. That was not what he said. Uh, there is no formula for determining the best balance of using available resources for immediate humanitarian aid and boosting boosting food production, reducing the need the need for aid. Yes, but we know improving food systems is the answer. There is no formula. Uh, the formula seems pretty simple to me. I am not a global food aid expert, and I'm not a billionaire, but I think I'm with the billionaires on this one. The donor-fatigued billionaires. We all know what the formula is, but nobody is going to say it. And they, the UN sure as hell ain't going to say it. The mainstream media ain't going to say it. We all know the formula for reducing global food insecurity is reducing the number of mouths eating the food. It is called bringing countries back into their carrying capacity and out of overshoot, which is what he uh, kind of skirts around with this next factoid. Okay, out of 196 countries, according to Kerry, how many are net food importers? Out of, okay, out of 196 countries, how many, you know, import more food than they export? How about 131 of the 196, which is another way of saying that 131 countries on this planet have overshot their carrying capacity. And they are depending on the rest of the world, whatever that is, 60-something countries, to feed them. If it wasn't for export or imports from their end coming into their country to feed their own population, their population would start starving to death until they get back within the carrying capacity of their country. This is real rocket science. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so what does Kerry suggest uh, we need to, uh, I guess, improve in countries that are currently food insecure? What is his recipe? 
How about reliable local production? Well, I can get behind that one a little bit. Uh, Well-functioning markets. There you go. Strong, responsive democracies and open interna international trade are essential to strengthening food systems. And then, of course, uh, Vladimir Putin. He goes into that rant. It is Vladimir Putin's fault that somewhere between 193 million and 345 million people on this planet uh, out of the uh, out of the 534 million people born onto the planet in the last six years are starving. Okay, so now we get to the causes of the multiple causes. The food security crisis is unlike any of the past, as it is the result of multiple major causes. Okay, number one, climate change, the number one cause of the food security crisis. Number two, the corona panic, meaning the economic fallout of the overreach uh, by governments uh, you, you know, to stamp out the virus is going to end up uh, starving a lot more people to death than would have died from the virus, is what he's talking there. And of course, global conflict, meaning it's Vladimir Putin's fault. Okay, so there you go. That's it. Climate change, corona panic, and conflict, the three C's. We've heard this one before, the three C's, nowhere are the two O's, overpopulation and overshoot. More than half of those experiencing hunger today live in conflict zones. Yes. Uh, oh, we have some, some other causes. Uh, historically low grain stockpiles high fertilizer prices and limited fertilizer availability, which we just talked about. So it's, that's the problem. Uh, moreover, 21 of the world's 37 major aquifers are in decline. Uh, the Ganges and the Arabian aquifer systems uh, are among those suffering serious depletion. So it's those sinking aquifers. What would be making aquifers sink? Could it be too many people using the water? All right. This is a multi-year crisis due to the many factors at play and the need for multiple growing seasons to restore supplies and markets. There are no quick or easy solutions. Uh, well, there very well might be a quick solution. Not sure how easy it's going to be, but it's going to be quick. The fight against hunger must be conducted with a long-term perspective and on multiple fronts. That could have been a time to mention, uh, reduce, anyway. The U.S. government, meaning U.S. taxpayers, the U.S. government is engaged with a multi-year strategy that seeks to create food systems, to create food systems, meaning grow more food that are inclusive, resilient, and sustainable all right, we got the three big lefty words in one sentence. Inclusive, resilient, and sustainable. Yes, we have expanded Feed the Future. Feed the Future, the U.S. government's flagship global hunger and food security 
initiative to eight new countries. Eight new countries have been added to feed the future, every one of them in Africa. So now the U.S. taxpayers uh, are feeding eight more African countries than we were, it, it didn't say uh, how recently. All right, you go. So now more country, you know, are hopping on the bandwagon with their hands out. Uh, anyway, talking about all the way the U.S. is going to feed Africa. Uh, okay, I'm just... Uh, This goes on and on and on. Get to the bottom, Carrie. All right, take it away. Wrap it up. Carrie Fowler, when we choose, when we choose to invest in global food security, we all benefit. We all benefit in feeding, uh, what was it, 131 countries an overshoot. We all benefit. And I don't know if he means all of the non-humans we share the planet with benefit. It doesn't make that clear. <clears throat> In joining world leaders at the United Nations to address food insecurity, we will leverage our investment and put America in the lead where it must be. So how many comments do we have? We have nine comments on that story. Uh, let's see, shall I? Huh. We have nine comments. And I was going to read a comment by this fellow Humpty Dumpty, but there seems to be an issue. Ah, uh, let's see. There seems to be an issue. Ah. Here's Humpty Dumpty with four thumbs up. Humpty Dumpty has gotten four thumbs up with this comment. <clears throat> Writing, editing, and publishing an article on global food insecurity without ever once mentioning the word overpopulation is like writing an article about McDonald's without ever mentioning the word hamburger. There you go. I, this Humpty Dumpty guy seems to, he, he starts sounding like a broken record after a while, but uh, you know, you just have to repeat this mantra. Uh, need to make a new t-shirt. That's a lot to put on a t-shirt, but anyway. I've got some dead hemlock trees to carry up the side of a mountain with a little dog. Since it's not raining, let's get out and go for a walk. Get out there uh, and carry dead hemlock trees up a mountain while you still can. Bye, guys. All right, are you up, sleepyhead? <clears throat>